Hey everyone, welcome to part 3 on how to build the graphics. Last time we put together the configuration that we wanted uh, according to our personal preference of the lightsaber. Some of you might have gone A New Hope and some of you might have gone The Last Jedi, Empire Strikes Back and The Force Awakens and so on. I specifically went for The Empire Strikes Back and as I explained in the previous video, the only difference between The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens to The Empire Strikes Back is the button over here, where The uh, Force Awakens Last Jedi has the glass eye replica uh, in place of the well, red uh, button. So today I'm going to be going over and I'm going to be explaining all the necessary modifications you have to make to your lightsaber because unfortunately, uh, like I said in my review, there are some things that you need to modify on this Graflex in order to make well, the specific clan switch that I'm going for. If you're not, I want to explain to you what you need to do and what not to, but if you're not going for the clamp switch, you won't need to modify and uh, uh, or cut the uh, inner core section, but I'll get to that in a minute. So we took our lightsaber and it was a very cool static prop up to now, but now we're going to need to take it apart. Because slowly we're going to be needing to go over the uh, inner workings of the lightsaber and we're going to have to start building it from the inside out. Don't worry, it's not going to remain like this, however, and if you go step by step, you will be, uh, well, piecing it back together in no time at all. So let's go over uh, the lightsaber, okay? Um, we are going to take this apart and we need our, our Allen keys, specifically we will be needing the 1 16th and the 5 uh, uh, 64th Allen wrenches. You're going to be needing your um, three millimeter hex head. I'm not sure how much that is in inches, but um, if I do my math correctly, uh, that is about uh, seven to eight inches, if I've got this right. Uh, you may need to modify this and uh, drill in a deeper hole so that you can get the brass pins because this is what I'm going to be using this for. And if you haven't modified it, you can use some toothless pliers to get the brass pins out nice and uh, steady. So let's take our lightsaber apart. The first thing that you're going to want to do is take your 1 16th inch Allen key and you want to do or undo the screw that is on your clamp. You're going to be taking that all, away, all apart. Since you're going to be taking the lightsaber uh, and stripping it down uh, bolt to bolt, you want to be very careful that you do not lose any of the components to your Graflex. If you lose them, it will be very, very hard to replace them because these screws are practically unique. So um, you can find, if you lose something, you can try and find something that comes close, but I suggest that you're careful. As you can see on the outlines of my cutting mat, I have set a cloth on the table that I'm working on and it helps uh, from preventing my screws from rolling around out of control. So I have undone the screw for my clamp. So I'm going to undo my clamp lever so I can remove the bottom section of the graphics. So, this is one of the first things that I modified and we are going to talk about this, I promised that I would. When you loosen the clamp, one of the first things that is going to be moving around is the uh, clamp card. If you've gone with the New Hope version, I'm pretty sure that you will have understood that the bubble strip is very shaky and it doesn't stay in place no matter how much you tighten the clamp. Whereas the circuit card is a little more steadier. That is because the circuit card is a lot wider uh, than the bubble card. So let's put these aside. If you have bags that you want to uh, put them in so that you don't lose them, that is a good idea too. Next we unscrew the back end of our lightsaber. Nice and steadily. And there we go. You don't need to use too much excessive force, just be gentle with it and it will slowly come apart just like that oops 
Now I guess my suspicions have come true. The inner core is also coming out with the um, back end. That, that's one of the disadvantages that I said in my review that since it's a two-piece design, um, yeah, the tape, uh, well, hasn't, it hasn't stripped on very well to the inner core, which means that we're going to have to take it out the other side. Okay, but anyway, we would have done that anywho. So let's take the uh, inner core out, the lower part at least. So you have your back end of the pommel. You're going to put that aside. Um, I want to put it over here. Or if you have an empty box that you want to put them in, that can work too. Specifically, I'm going to be going with the box that my uh, graphics came in. So I'm going to take my inner half, lower half, and I'm going to be putting it into my graphics. Same thing goes for the clamp card. I don't think I'm going to lose it in there. We will be discussing the clamp modification, the inner core modification, and of course, the set screws for the retention, uh, the blade retention screws, which in the Graflex 2.5 are the glass eye and the uh, red button that sit on the bottom of the Graflex. So these were also modified, so we're going to be discussing it as well. So, we have the top half of the Graflex that needs to be stripped down so we can take out the inner core and piece this together. So, uh, let's go now bit by bit. First of all, you're going to be needing your 3mm um, uh, hex head. If you've modified it, it will be a lot easier, but since I haven't, and you do not want to um, spin it around the brass pins because you will uh, ruin the grooves and they will round out and um, threading them in and out will be a lot harder. So I suggest that you take your um, toothless pliers, if they're straight and not curved like mine, that can also work. And you just simply unthread nice and slow. I wanted to take the brass pins out first because they are my major concern. There we go. That's the first one out and we apply the same principle to the rest. And if you want to use the um, hex head uh, after you untighten it, your brass pins with your tweezers, your pliers, that also works just fine. So basically all I have to do is just loosen it a little and let's apply the same to the others. There we go. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, so that's another one. And that's another one. So the brass pins off the Graflex have been removed. The retention screw has also been removed. Uh, what's next? You have the well, side switch. Let's take that out. Like I said, in a Vintage or a Raiders Volt uh, replica, specifically the Raiders Volt one, I'm sure of that, um, this acts as a tactile side switch. Um, it does turn the lightsaber on and off, but uh, here it's just a static piece of, uh, well, it's just decorative. You're not going to have to take out the bunny ears, fortunately. Uh, but you do need to take off the beer tab and the um, inner core retention screw. I left these two for last because they come with a specific uh, well instruction. Uh, since this screw puts pressure all the way down to the inner core, you may want to untighten your uh, beer tab first. Just slightly. 
If it gets tight, unscrew the bottom half of your inner core. Screw like that. Oh, mine came out. It's okay. Doesn't matter. So the pressure is relieved off the top of the beer tab and now it has unscrewed. The screw on the beer tab is rather smooth. It doesn't have any grooves. I'm not sure if my uh, camera is focused. Um, I think so. Come on. There you go. It is smooth and it does not show any um, signs of how to do this properly. Do not use any tweezers with teeth or grooves. You will ruin it and you don't want to. Just be patient and unscrew this with your fingers. Nice and slowly. I recommend you doing this upside down and twist your uh, graphlex if you have to because the inner core has come apart and what's important is that the beer tab has the screw and this little washer that you do not want to lose. It's a very small part and it can be very easily lost. So let us put all of our screws over here. And our inner core has come apart. This is a two-piece design. Like I said, it has one disadvantage that it does not um, It doesn't connect, it doesn't align with the uh, hole that we want it to, unfortunately. But I have a theory that if you have your um, clamp mod, nope, the theory has been uh, rejected, sorry, it needs to be aligned, it really does, so that the wire can go through. You need that little gap inside. It's essential, otherwise you cannot have a wire come through. So we have the empty hollowed out uh, emitter part. We put that aside. And the clamp. Since I'm not going to be discussing any well, modifications to the emitter because there are not any that need to be made, I can put that in my Graflex box. The modifications that I have specifically made for my Graflex is a little list. So if you have a Dremel, you want to use your Dremel for these specific things. If you're thinking of purchasing a Dremel and you think it's too expensive and you have access to one um, and you can borrow it from a friend or you work in a workshop that has a Dremel, you're going to be doing one specific set of well, things with the Dremel. So. Um, owning one is an advantage, but if you feel pressure of buying one and you think that it's not going to be worth it, um, that's up to you as well. But specifically, what you're going to be needing to do is uh, a few modifications to some of the things needed for our Graflex to be functional. Now, if you have a crystal that needs to be modified, you can use a Dremel to sand out the crystal. Since the crystals, however, quartz is very, very um, hard and it's very tough, it's a very, very hard material. Uh, dr drilling through this was a pain and I still do need to modify it a little bit more. So I'm going to have to take this to my workshop one of these days, uh, tomorrow or the day after. Uh, so you're going to need to modify your crystal in order to fit properly in the chamber in the crystal chamber because like we said we do not want it to hit against the speaker in our chassis which is going to connect over here like this so uh, if you put the crystal inside you also want to make sure that your LED diode uh, fits behind the crystal and uh, that it doesn't protrude in or out too much that the spacing is just perfect now that is something that you will uh, judge according to what size your crystal is because not all crystals are the same some may be thinner some may be thicker smaller uh, shorter or whatever so let me just uh, put these back so one of the things that you're going to be needing a Dremel for is the crystal modifying it 
and specifically rounding out and straightening the end where the LED is going to butt against and you want these two to um, like I have like I show you like I'm showing right now um, come on please focus there we go so the LED and the crystal butt up perfectly because I modified the LED as well you're going to need to use a Dremel but since this is very very uh, well, uh, soft plastic it will just uh, sand off right uh, right away it's not going to be that difficult but you want to be careful you do not want to hit the diode too deep I don't know if you can see it um, let's just use some paper for the background now you do not want to hit the metallic diode inside which is the LED itself so be careful just sand it down enough so that it's squared let me put these back in their bag so I don't lose them and the chassis end the brass pins should have been collected a long time ago um, a long time ago in the Graflex far far from mine the holes for the brass pins inside the brass pins would will protrude inside the inner core I'm not sure if you can see that but where the holes of the brass pins are when the brass pins were threaded on they would stick out inside just like their tension screws which means you need to sand them down on the inside with the Dremel as well uh, so that you can fit your blade plug I have no such problem with my brass pins in this 2.5 so I don't need to do that that's okay but when I had my Graflex on um, when I got these uh, in the kit the two retention screws as you can see the threads were a lot longer they were at least seven inches no seven millimeters I guess yes seven millimeters which is a lot longer I have shortened them down significantly so that when they act as a retention they do not stick out of the graph legs too much so basically I made them flush against the graph legs so that they didn't stick out like this so you may want to sand down your retention screw threads to the point where the retention will be tight enough to hold the blade and blade plug firmly uh, but not loose enough so that the um, threads miss the blade and blade plug uh, and don't will retain anything at all. So you're basically going to have to screw in and out until you find the perfect tightness uh, and uh, will position for the retention screws so that's another job for a Dremel you're going to want to cut these threads down uh, a lot at least they were twice in length twice the size in length when I got them okay another thing that you're going to need to modify is the inner core itself here one of the other modifications is that you're going to be needing a retention screw for the LED which is going to be housed in this section of the Graflex. You specifically just find the point, align it with the Graflex and your chassis and you do your retention screw. I have not done mine because like I said earlier in my previous videos that I do believe that the retention screw uh, for the blade uh, will act as a very solid um, will anchor the LED firmly into place so uh, I do not need to drill a retention screw however when you get the Corbanth 2.5 kit it comes with a uh, screw hole in here already drilled which is going to be the one for your LED retention screw now I have checked this out a little bit and when you align the Graflex and you've lined this up I have lined the Graflex chassis with 
the this is where the top part of Graphlex is and well as you can see I'm afraid that my set screw is going to drop into a hole uh, I don't want that to happen so I'm going to have to do some landscaping maybe I might may tilt the chassis either to the left or the right in order to get this uh, right I'm not sure how I'm going to do this properly but uh, we will see how it goes but from the looks of things I think I will be hitting uh, one of these two holes so that might be a problem I might need to um, put something against it but I do think that uh, since the battery will be going in here uh, it will go up against the battery but still it's going to pinch the battery uh, that might be something you might want to look into and that is what I wanted to mention in the necessary modifications so look it up and be very careful that you do not uh, drop into uh, uh, the little grooves in the chassis and last but not least I told you that I was going to I had modified my clamp now what was the modification that I made to the clamp and I think that I said this in the first video but when you first get your clamp you have to open it like this you have to pinch it together with your fingers and whenever you would twist it into place and whenever the clamp lever would align back to its original position it would click and snap into place that is due to the fact that the um, one of the two clamp holders for the lever as I will uh, take it apart right now this has a washer on its own you do not want to lose it so put it in a position where you won't have to look for it so there I take the clamp lever off and the clamp just falls apart into two pieces what I specifically modified to the clamp is this section here as you can see it was squared and I just rounded it out with a Dremel, with the pointy drill bit part of the Dremel. All I did was just round it out. The logic is so that the clamp lever can spin around freely within the graphlex without you having to uh, press it together. So that means that I can spin it around when it's already installed on my lightsaber. That is a good modification and I do think it's an important one at that so you do want to go with this mod. So basically, these are the modifications that you're going to be needing to do to your lightsaber. But we're not done with the work needed uh, to put for the Dremel. Since we are going to be going with the accent rods that are going to be put in place of these five little holes in the chassis, the accent holes uh, will take these metal rods they have been specifically uh, de been designed in diameter to accept these rods like I said in my earlier video they are from the K and S precision metals made in USA the code number is 8167 and um, in inches it is 0.114 inches in millimeters it is 2.89 millimeters so I guess that my European and American friends now understand the uh, dimensions of the uh, brass rods so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this um, I wish I had my pliers or something here so let's open this Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to tear the whole thing apart. I hope you wrote it down because the label has been officially destroyed. So, that's that. You may want to clean the brass rods around because they've got some glue stuck to it. So, yeah. Now, 
I need five of these so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting one of my brass rods inside the chassis and I am going to take my marker pen and what I'm basically going to do is I am going to mark the dimensions right there Oops. here we go so uh, when I sit down and measure these uh, accurately I'm going to divide them into five little uh, brass spaces which I'm going to be doing later off camera and I want five equal pieces which I am going to cut with the Dremel so I'm going to make sure that they are going to be perfectly uh, that they're you know not skewed they're not cut off um, in a very sloppy way I want them to be uh, properly uh, rounded and we are going to do that when we assemble the chassis next time so in the next episode we are going to be um, configuring and uh, customizing our chassis so this is why I think that it was a perfect time to introduce the brass rods and open the uh, package for it since we're going to be needing about five of these I calculate that one of these brass rods is enough for the uh, chassis so if you have two rods and two chassis then you're in gold uh, you're golden so um, that's that I'm going to be taking the one that is spare aside and essentially we are done we do not need any other uh, modifications as of yet with the Dremel so I hope you have wrote these down I'm going to summarize them again once again for you guys the Dremel is going to be needed for your LED diode for the crystal chamber you're going to want to uh, sand down and even your LED uh, crystal your crystal sorry for the LED your brass pins inside the Graflex if they protrude in the inner core which uh, will bother and get in the way of any blade plug and blade you should smooth them inside as well if you think that's necessary the clamp modification where you basically take the squared out one not this one this one is threaded this one is not the same as you can see you want to take the one that is uh, squared out when you first get it and then you take a Dremel bit and you just simply round it out not too much but just enough to make it round and square at the same time take a look at the design uh, and you may have an idea of how it needs to be done so then you're going to have to take your um, clamp and put it together and uh, take your lever be very careful and thread it nice and easy Oh, come on, do me this favor. And that's that. Your clamp has been modified. Now, since we're done with that, I'm going to put that in my graphics box. And um, I can put this aside too, and we're done with the chassis as well. We're basically done with today's episode. Then you're going to be needing the uh, I have a list here, the brass rods and your retention screws. So, um, LED diode, crystal, brass pins inside the Graflex, that's not mandatory. That is when you, if you have a blade plug at first, just check it when the Graflex gets shipped to you to see if there's any resistance from the uh, brass pins. If it's too coarse inside, then uh, I suggest that you just sand it down just a little bit then you're going to be needing to modify your clamp, your accent rods, and your retention screws to a um, size where they can both act as retention screws uh, so that they can be tight enough to hold down the blade plug and the blade, whatever you have in the lightsaber at that time, uh, but not to stick out. So it's both aesthetic and practical at the same time. You do not want it to stick out of the graphics too much you want it to be perfectly flush like that 
sorry about that. Um, so to conclude, you want it to be just flush enough. Um, not sticking out too much, but you want it to be tight enough that you can uh, firmly tighten down the retention for the blade and the plug. These are the modifications that you need, so I hope you guys found this useful. And on the next part, we're going to be customizing our 3D printed chassis with the colors that we have, uh, gold and silver. So I hope you guys found this useful, and I will see you in the next episode of How to Build a Graphlex. Uh, until then, take care. Thank you for watching. Uh, so goodbye.